Good morning. We welcome you here this morning. We are uh, excited that you have made it into our midst for worship and fellowship. Uh, a couple of things we want to point out in the bulletin. Uh, first and foremost, you just got a little preview of our concert for August 2nd. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, sacred music uh, led this year by Kelly uh, and, and friends, uh, a, an ever-growing list of friends. Um, but uh, we plan to have a, a great evening. Uh, we will be taking up a free will donation. Uh, the, the tip jar for the, uh, uh, all the artists and, uh, involved and hope that you will come and participate and, and enjoy some time uh, listening to some really good music. A uh, couple other things just to point out really quickly. Uh, Wednesday night we had a great attendance at the uh, IFD event uh, out at Ruley Park. Um, had, a, had a meal with about 50... 55 in attendance, uh, which was a fantastic turnout. Uh, 17 kids, 17 kids. Uh, had a little message on Jesus walking on the water and, and then we uh, went and put that all to practice in, in the swimming pool. No one quite made it, but you know, we tried, we tried. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was concerned just for a moment. I was told that there may or may not be footage of some of that. Um, <clears throat> and we'll leave it at that. The Facebook page sometime this week. Oh, the Facebook page sometime this week to see some actual video footage. We won't get into that. Uh, anyway, uh, make sure you take home your... Uh, your newsletter, uh, keep track of the things that are going on in the life of your church. Stand and greet each other in the name of Christ.
please stand for the call to worship. We all want to be a superhero. Doing good, fighting evil, seeking justice, loved by the people. We all want a superpower. To fly, to be super strong, to accomplish amazing things. Through God, all things are possible. And we, God's people, can perform miracles. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Allow me, through faith, to be the miracle in someone else's life. Amen. On the calendar, we're about halfway through the summer months, or at least what we count as the summer months, even though summer didn't begin until late June and goes late into September. According to the school calendar, school is right around the corner. You see the back-to-school display starting to pop up and all the different stores and people are looking for their deals and trying to get everything that they need for school. On our calendar, we know it as the middle of hurricane season. It's starting up and it's getting churning out there in the warm waters of the tropics. And we haven't heard of a storm yet that has caused trouble. But we of the Methodist Church have already, like the squirrels preparing for winter, stored up our nuts. The Umcor warehouse is full and waiting to send things out. In fact, we had a part in that. I, I was looking for my wife, and she saw me looking for her, but she doesn't know what I was looking for her for because she's got to remind me. When we went to annual conference, the thing we forgot to tell you is we took... Nine flood kits, 20 hygiene kits, and five school kits. Thank you very much. (laughs) 
which were then added to a truck full of all the same stuff coming from many other places and headed down to Illinois and New Orleans to be on the ready. Because that's how you are able to say with all confidence, today, before we have heard whether it's Houston or Miami or Charlotte, or Puerto Rico, we have already collected all the supplies to ensure that as soon as it is safe, and even probably before, UMCOR will be on the scene, ready to help and to give a hand to those who need it most as they face the crisis of their day. Something to consider. Turn to God in prayer. Almighty God, continue to move us, to prepare us, to be ready for the storm that we know always will come. You have established us to be your church in the world. You have promised that if we will be your people, you will be our God. You will guide us will direct us, you will protect us. These are not promises against any harm, but they are promises that no matter what we face, we never face it alone. We give you thanks this day and we worship your name for this great blessing. Continue to lead us in discipleship. Keep us mindful of those who are sick and hurting this day, those who are struggling to find peace in their lives, those who mourn and suffer from loss. Allow us to be guiding hands that reach out across the chasm of whatever crisis comes that we might help fill the need because you have first loved us and we can show that same love to others. Keep us mindful of those who are not with us this day. We are in the midst of that season where we have opportunity to relax and refresh, to be at the lake or to go on vacation to travel and see friends and family. We ask for your mercies to continue to watch over all those who are absent from our presence and to remind them that they are always part of a larger body. Whisper in our ear this day. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our ears, our minds to your presence that we might learn, we might put what we take in into action. In that way, that we might continue in steps of discipleship, following in the example of Jesus Christ, and living out the words he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Would the children please come forward at this time? It's so good to see you all, and I'm very happy that you're here. I love your dress. <laughs> Superhero girl right here. All right. So do you guys know who this is over here? Spider-Man, right. <laughs> you know, I don't know a lot about superheroes. What can you tell me about Spider-Man? What are some of his powers? He shoots out webs. So does that mean he can go from place to place on buildings and stuff. Okay, what else? He has, he has, he can use his webs to also hold things together. Holds things together with his webs. Wow, those are some pretty amazing things. I don't really know anything about Spider-Man and he didn't tell me very much about himself earlier either. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Spider-Man, for being with us today. Well as, <laughs> well, as I understand it, and I got this from a good source, it was Pastor Jim, he tells me that Spider-Man got his powers when he was young. He was just a teenager. And I think that's very important for all of us to know about that, because there are lots of examples in the Bible, especially in 1 Samuel, about young people who did great things. Now, when I was a girl, and when I was in Sunday school, uh, my Sunday school teacher taught me a song, and it's, it was called Only a Boy Named David. Do any of you out there remember hearing that song? Oh, I'm hoping some of you will want to sing along. Um, it's a story about a shepherd boy who fights a giant named Goliath, and he does this when no one else in the Israelite army wants to do that because they were all scared. But David said, I can do this. So here is a little clip, look up there on the screen, about only a boy named David. Feel free to sing along. So he did this with just a sling and some stones and um, fought this big giant and won. There's a real key phrase in this song, and I don't remember this phrase in the song I learned when I was growing up, but it said, and one little prayer went up to God and the giant came tumbling down. So the thing about David is that he had confidence that God was going to be with him and he was going to help him and he prayed to God about that. So what I want you to learn from this story today is that God can use you, an ordinary kid, 
an ordinary boy, girl, man, or woman to do anything that he nudges you to do. If you feel a little nudge to do something and you think God's telling you to do that, he's going to help you to be able to do that. Can we have a little prayer? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word and for the stories that you give us in the Bible to help us know what you want us to do and for helping us to know that no matter who we are, a boy, a girl, a man, a woman, five years old, 13 years old, 35 years old, 60 or 80, you can use us, just an ordinary person, to do your work here on earth. In thy name we pray, amen. I have a little color page for you and a, the, a song. The song's on here, too, so that you can look that up at home if you want to learn how to sing that. Okay? Thank you. Pass them on to somebody else there. There you go. with things you don't understand.
Mine eyes into the hills, once cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord, who makes heaven and earth. Grant a blessing on this time spent that the words spoken and the words heard might be one and the same. Spoken and heard, they'll be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Spider Man got his powers because in an experiment. He is bitten by a radioactive spider. He's a kid. In the movie, he's 14, although the actor doesn't quite look quite that young. But he's a young kid, full of exuberance, energy, innocence clear sense of right and wrong. He has the strength of a spider. So he can almost literally leap tall buildings in a single bound, can webcast for the rest, and swing into action. The comic books always called him the amazing Spider-Man. He is certainly the youngest of all the superheroes in the Marvel world. And he is also the cornerstone of the whole franchise when it comes to the actual comic book industry. Everything else is built around, and he comes in and out of almost every other comic book selection. Spider-Man. In the movies, he comes off maybe a little too young. He comes off maybe a little too exuberant, a little too excited. He is Tony Stark's protege and has a super special spider suit that has many of the same computerized features that Iron Man's suit has. 
He disables some of the training protocols so he can get into the more advanced features. And thus, when he goes to save the day, he's only 98% successful. Which, of course, means, ultimately, zero. The line in the scene that I really want you to hold on to is, if you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't wear it. I think that's important. Obviously, the connection in our scriptures is David. David who went out and sought Goliath. David, the young shepherd, anointed king before his brothers. David who killed a lion with his sling long before he showed up out at the army encampment. Hollywood has a different way of playing things out. You know, if Hollywood was in charge of the David story, we get the whole thing with David showing up, David having the confidence, David saying, send me, David putting on the oversized armor and then taking it off, David collecting the five stones by the stream, and then Hollywood would have to take a detour. Because he'd have to get out there and grab that first stone and swing it and have it go soaring right past the giant's ear. And the giant would lie, give a big ho, 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 and come running at him. And as David grabbed the next stone, he'd get thumped by the giant and go flying backwards. And the stone would go flying out of his hands, out of his reach. And he'd reach in the bag for another stone. And the giant would take a swing with the sword. And the bag would drop because the, the thing, and the stone would fall to the ground. And he'd, he'd just have the one in his hand. And he'd be down to his last stone. And the giant would be ready to give the death swing in. Bang! And down would finally go the giant. That's how Hollywood would play that, right? And then we'd watch it every Easter, and that would become the story that we know, just like Moses. That's not the story, is it? David went, collected five stones. How many did he use? One. See, the piece we always miss with the David and Goliath story is what happened before that. Before we got to the place where he stepped out there with his five stones. Before he went to the king and said, send me, and they put him in the armor too big for him. Before when he first arrived at the camp. He got to the camp and everyone was standing at the sidelines in a stalemate. And the giant was standing out there and had been standing out there for a week, two weeks, waiting for somebody to step forward and face him. And when David arrived, he looked at the Hebrew people. The army assembled there. 10, 20, 30,000 men. And he looked at them and he said, is there no one in the Israel army 
who can stand up to this giant? Aren't we the Hebrew people? Aren't we the people of God? Is there no one person? Faith is about that idea that I and God can do anything. I and God can do anything. And if God is for us, who can stand against us? Is there no one in the people of God who can step forward against this giant? Now, if David hadn't shown up, you know, 4,000 years later, we all might still be standing on those sidelines. They stood there for two weeks waiting for someone to show up and ask that question. And then as they collectively had no answer, this boy walked out there and gave them the example. God plus me can do anything. That's an interesting relationship because it really does have two parts. There's God, and then there's me. Do you understand that? God is powerful enough for me to be able to do anything, but without me to step up and do it, God has no one to work through. And for two weeks, an entire army stood there and God had no one to work through. Hmm. Think on that for a moment or five. You see, I need God, but God also needs me. And you. And the people five doors down on the left-hand side of the street. God needs people to work through to make the things that God does happen. That's the relationship God has created with us. Now, the challenge is that we all have giants. We all have giants. while we aren't talking about it loudly, we have talked about it quite a bit of late in all the different meetings and committees and it's been brought forward in newsletter articles and from the front of the congregation that we have a giant looming in front of us. The fall programming schedule. We're in need of key people to step forward and take positions of coordinator of the Sunday school program. It's a tough job. You have to fill out the schedule and get people organized to be the teachers. I always learned that you take the job of chair of a committee because you get to pick out what day you meet.
And then you have a whole team of people you can delegate the rest to. Primary job of the coordinator is to create a schedule. It sounds really challenging. Here's the thing. If not that giant, there'll be another one. Because there's always a giant. There's always a giant. If it's not that one, it will be another one. Because we're the human people. All we do is face giants. But God, plus me, can do... That sounded like about as much confidence as... God, plus me, can do... Aaron, how are you today? Amazing. God plus me can do anything. <laughs> we are called to be people of faith. We're called to be people of faith. That's all David showed, is in the midst of this huge crisis. A huge army standing there waiting for something to happen and everyone looking to someone else to do it. David showed up with the faith knowing God and me can do anything. In some ways, it would have been much more humorous if he had gone out there in that armor. <laughs> you know what? The giant still would have fell. Because David didn't do it. He just made himself available. Spider-Man is told in the movie when he says, I am nothing without the suit. Don't take my suit. If you're nothing without the suit, you shouldn't wear it. I am nothing without God. But then God is nothing without me. If I don't recognize that in some way, shape, or form, if I don't recognize the fact that the only way it works is if I make myself available, then maybe that faith isn't quite what I think it is. It's the age-old question. Is it really just faith? Or is it faith with works? Because at some point, we have to realize there's only one question on the test when we reach the end. But you don't get to answer it. The only way Christ can is if you have put that faith into use. By the end of the movie, Spider-Man redeems himself. He's, 
given the opportunity for even a prettier, shinier, better suit, But you know what? What's really interesting is at the end of the movie, when Tony Stark offers him the prettier, better, shinier suit, he turns it down because he's learned something. The suit isn't what makes him who he is. It's what was inside him. What is inside you? The love of God, power of Christ, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do amazing things. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the morning offering? Please put your response forms in the offering plate when it comes through. Let us pray. Architect and designer of the universe, the heavens themselves shout your name and power. We often struggle to know our place in creation. So help us, help remind us that there are those who will not know you unless they hear you proclaimed from our hearts. We give our tithes and offerings this morning, grateful that we have a way in our giving and our living to proclaim the name and power of your blessed Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Now go with the assurance you are created in the image of God, redeemed by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, guided and protected by his Holy Spirit, prepared to face the trials and the giants that tomorrow brings. Amen.